it's very true nothing in life is free but ever you imagine the most important things in your life who ever you are and where ever you are your health is the most important priority number 1 then family friends love purpose passion wellness education and much more similarly nothing is without any reason or purpose safety first life the ultimate purpose is to protect workers from harm and their families from suffering there is also the objective for this training session the reason for this training session is that the work at height regulations 2005 places an implicit duty on those using scaffolding to inspect and record the results of those inspections before use and within 7 days the aim of the safety training session is that those taking part will have an awareness of what a legal scaffolding should be that they are responsible for there are some specific legal requirements related to scaffolding safety health and safety at work act 1974 provision and use of work equipment regulations 1998 management of health and safety at work regulations 1999 work at height regulations 2005 and manual handling regulations 1992 i'll go in detail what the act and regulation says for scaffolding safety and what responsibilities they are posing on the employer hey this is javed this is the fifth and final session of scaffolding safety series in this training session i'll summarize the previous four sessions that's why you will learn scaffold safety a to z so stick around you are on the platform of safety first life if you are new on this channel kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon if you find the video informative then like comment and share with your friends and colleague let us jump on the main topic we'll start with the legal requirements health and safety at work act 1974 health and safety at work act 1974 places a duty of care on your employer who must protect your health and safety and the health and safety of others who they may not employ this basic duty involves providing you with number 1 a safe place of work number 2 a safe system of work number 3 safe plant and equipment number 4 training information instruction and supervision you have a duty of care to protect yourself and others while at work you may be held liable for any harm you cause to others at work suppliers have a duty to supply equipment that is safe to use and to supply the relevant information instructions for safe and correct use let us discuss now what is included in provision and use of work equipment regulations 1998 dear friends and colleagues these regulations place duties on employers and suppliers to provide equipment for use at work which meets three basic criteria number 1 it must be fit for use it must work number 2 it must be fit for its intended purpose it must do what you want it to do and number 3 it must comply legally and meet all standards the provision of instructions information and training on the safe use of work equipment or the provision of competent supervision is a mandatory requirement under these regulations if you find any work equipment unsafe 
are inoperative you must not use it you must take it out of service and inform your supervisor this is not by me this is by law and you have to comply with let us go through now the management of health and safety at work regulations 1998 these regulations place duties on employers to carry out risk assessments on all work activities which will identify significant risks to people health and safety hazards found during work activities which have the potential to cause harm need to be removed if possible or uh, if this is not possible they must be controlled in such a way as to reduce the likelihood of harm to the lowest possible risk safe systems of work are formulated from these risk assessments usually in the form of method statements which detail a safe method of work the hazards identified the controlling provisions put in place to protect workers and any residual risk for which appropriate personal protective equipment will be issued and must be worn employers are duty bound to manage health and safety in such a way as to prevent foreseeable accidents and injuries to people in their employment and also people not in their employment workers who are to carry out working operations covered by a method statement must follow the safe method of work if this cannot be done then stop the work here the most important regulation that is much relevant to scaffolding safety is work at height regulations 2005 these regulations place an implicit duty on places from where it may be possible to fall the overriding principle of employers to comply with these regulations is to do all that is reasonably practicable to prevent anyone from falling the hierarchy of control for managing and selecting equipment for work at height is number 1 avoid work at height when ever possible number 2 use work equipment or other measures to prevent falls where they cannot avoid working at height number 3 where they cannot eliminate the risk of a fall use work equipment or other measures to minimize the distance and consequences of a fall should one occur fall prevention measures include the provision of number 1 top handrail no less than 950 mm number 2 toe boards on all open edges from which objects can fall number 3 toe board minimum height 150 mm number 4 maximum gap between the top of the toe board and any guardrail 470 mm this usually means double guardrails are employed but other suitable protection can replace the middle rail such as a substantial mesh panel but the requirement for this protection to remain in place for the life of the working platform must be enforced by management number 5 minimum width of a working platform must be adequate for the work to be carried out but not less than 600 mm for persons only if depositing materials then minimum width must be 800 mm number 6 maximum vertical climb to a working platform must not exceed 9 meters rest it you have to memorize these six points because these are included in work at height regulations 2005 and all scaffolding work is at height as a safety practitioner as a scaffolding supervisor you should know your responsibilities and you have to act upon because legally you are responsible to implement work at height regulations 2005 another important legal requirement is manual handling regulations 1994 these regulations place a duty on employers to carry out risk assessments on activities which may involve manually handling loads the risk of manual handling injuries must be reduced by 
removing the need to manually handle loads redesigning the workplace our equipment are redesigning the working process to reduce manual handling operations reducing size weight shape or center of gravity of loads and making available mechanical means so loads can be moved safely dear friends and colleagues if loads have to be moved by human effort the employer must provide manual handling training so that people know how to lift and move loads correctly so as to reduce the risk of manual handling injury this is not the end of story the three main pieces of legislation codes of practices governing the use of scaffolding are work at height regulation 2005 as we already discussed number 2 bsen 12811-1 this is a british standard that is related to scaffolding safety regulation 12 subpart 10 work at height regulation inspections are required by competent persons and the scaffolding staff should be trained knowledgeable experienced and they will work under direct competent supervision regulation 12 of work at height regulation inspections are required on all scaffolding from which a person can fall when it is required before use after substantial alteration after adverse weather or occurrence or within every 7 days these are the conditions for inspections of scaffolding structures you are watching safety first life today the training session is about scaffolding safety a to z let us discuss now the parts of scaffolding number 1 standard number 2 ladder number 3 transom number 4 cross bracing number 5 top rail number 6 mid rail number 7 tow board number 8 brake guard and number 9 base plate and sole plate dear friends and colleagues this training session is very very important for you if you are appearing for a scaffolding supervisor interview or as an hsc practitioner if you are applying for a high rise building project then definitely you must know about the parts of the scaffolding and the scaffolding safety there might be a multiple choice question write down the names of any seven components of scaffolding that's why you must know the components of scaffolding base plate brick guard double coupler girder clamp joint pin port lock coupler reveal pin scaffold boards sleeve coupler or swivel coupler these all are the components of scaffolding let us make a quick and sharp overview of types of scaffolding there are three basic types of scaffold supported scaffolds suspended scaffold and other scaffolds what is a supported scaffold which consists of one or more platforms supported by rigid load bearing members such as poles legs frames outriggers etc what is a suspended scaffold which are one or more platforms suspended by ropes or other non rigid overhead support what do you understand by other scaffolds principally main lifts personal hoists etc which are sometimes thought of as vehicle or machinery but can be regarded as another type of supported scaffold have a look on the top of the building few workers they are cleaning the windows they are engaged in cleaning the glasses this is the example of suspended scaffolds down below on the left side this is supported scaffold and this is an example of other scaffold a lorry is used with mounted platform now we'll dig deeper 
what is included in supported scaffolds as i told you supported scaffolds consist of one or more platforms supported by outrigger beams brackets poles legs posts frames or similar rigid support the examples of supported scaffold are number 1 frame or fabricated scaffold number 2 mobile scaffold number 3 ladder jack scaffold number 4 pump jack scaffold number 5 tube and coupler scaffold and number 6 pole scaffold these all are included in supported scaffold have a look this is an example of frame or fabricated scaffold and on the right hand side this is mobile scaffold mobile scaffold can be moved from one place to another that's why you can see visualize the tires beneath the scaffold let us discuss in detail about the mobile scaffold it is always braced to prevent collapse casters and wheels locked to prevent movement while in a stationary position platforms must not extend beyond the base supports of the scaffold unless stability is ensured not allowed to ride on scaffolds unless the surface on which scaffold is being moved is free of pits holes and obstructions these are the conditions or the safety requirements to use mobile scaffold safely let us make a quick introduction of suspended scaffolds the suspended scaffolds might be single point two point multi point catenary interior hung needle beam multi level or float these are the examples of these all are the examples or different types of suspended scaffolds used for different activities and tasks this is an example on left hand side single point scaffold on the right side this is two point scaffold you can see the difference with these shapes and examples this is multi point and on the right hand side this is catenary scaffold this is one type of suspended scaffold how to maintain suspended scaffold safety counterweights secured and not removed until scaffold disassembled tie back secured to sound anchorage on the building or structure you can see here the anchorage and the counterweight that is required for the safety of suspended scaffold let us start the third type other scaffolds aerial lift dear friends and colleagues have a look in these examples on right hand side this is an aerial lift as a scaffolding supervisor or a safety practitioner you have to ensure proper fall protection prior to using includes use of guardrails never exceed load capacity don't move lift truck with workers in basket unless adequately designed upper controls personal carriers brakes set for outrigger use wheels must be choked these are the safety requirements once you are going to supervise aerial lift you have to consider these points by all respects do you think all this shall be done automatically certainly not this is the responsibility of scaffold competent person let us understand what are the roles and responsibilities of scaffolding competent person he has to inspect scaffolding and components prior to each work shape competent person has to determine possibility of providing fall protection and access scaffolding competent person will evaluate connections to support load competent person have to determine structural soundness and it is also the responsibility of the competent person to train erectors and dismantlers to recognize work hazards if somebody ask what is the responsibility of scaffolding competent person 
you can easily respond by memorizing these five points. Dear friends and colleagues, scaffolding has different duties or classes, very light duty, light duty, general purpose scaffolding, heavy duty scaffolding or special duty scaffold. There are some specifications. In the previous video, I have discussed in detail, but here I will make a quick overview. Very light duty scaffold have the loading capacity of 0.75 kN per square meter and the bay distance is 2.7 meter. Light duty scaffold have the loading capacity of 1.50 kN per square meter and the maximum bay length is 2.4 meter. In the general purpose scaffold, the loading capacity is 2 kN per square meter and the maximum bay length is 2.1 meter. In the heavy duty scaffold, the loading capacity is 2.50 kN per square meter and the maximum bay length is 2 meter. While in the special duty scaffold, the loading capacity is 3.00 kN per square meter and the maximum bay length is 1.8 meter. Dear friends and colleagues, loading capacity is increasing and the bay length is decreasing. If someone asks the scaffold duties or classes, so you can easily reply very light duty, light duty, general purpose, heavy duty and special duty scaffold with their specification and maximum bay length distance. As a safety practitioner, most of the time, HSC practitioners, they are feeling shy while they are on the scaffold structures. The reason is they are not understanding in detail about the scaffolding terminology and components. Even though they are finding some gaps, but they cannot explain what is missing or what need to be corrected. That's why I'm going to highlight the scaffolding terminology. As I told you, bay distance, what is bay? Distance between standards. What is a brace? Tube at an angle to give stability. That is bracing. What is a guardrail? To stop persons from falling. What is the function of ledger? Tube supporting transom. What do you understand by lift? Distance between ledgers. What is the function of a solboard? Placed under base plate to spread weight on soft ground. What is a standard? A upright tube. Ties. Means of fixing scaffold to structure. And what is a tow board? Upstand to prevent tools from falling. These are few words, common words, but they have some specific meaning. As a safety practitioner, once you are going to write a report, you must mention it in the scaffolding terminology. It will give extra weight and it will highlight that you are a knowledgeable person and the points you are indicating, they are also important to rectify as soon as possible. Otherwise, it may lead to collapse or a scaffolding accident. What is a transom? Tubes to support platform. And lastly, the working platform, set of boards to work on where the workers will stand and they will carry out the task. After the scaffolding terminology, let us jump now on scaffold tagging system. Do you know? Tags are mandatory. Three important tags, yellow, red and green. I'll go in detail. First of all, I'll discuss about the red tag. Red tag indicates the scaffold has not been inspected or is not safe for use. You can easily identify. It is mentioned on the red part. Don't use scaffold. And this message must be visible once you are going to post 
are faced a red tag what is the purpose of green tag green tag indicates cup fold is complete has been inspected and is safe for use at the time of inspection green cup fold tag valid for a maximum of 2 weeks make sure the tag is green and the information is updated and correct what is the use of yellow tag yellow tag indicates cup fold has been inspected and may be used only by workers wearing a properly anchored personal fall arrest system including a full body harness and a lanyard yellow cup fold tag valid for 2 weeks maximum here again you have to look for the information filled correctly and that is also update for displaying of tag red scaffold tag to be built into scaffold near each point of access by scaffold craftsmen only qualified scaffold craftsmen are allowed on a scaffold with the red scaffold tag dear friends and colleagues if scaffold equal to or less than 6 meter means 20 feet in height scaffold supervisor signs green or yellow scaffold tag and print date when next inspection is due date of next inspection must not be more than 2 weeks ahead supervisor inserts the sign green or yellow tags into the red holder if scaffold more than 6 meter means 20 feet tall scaffold supervisor sign tags and leaves date of next inspection blank supervisor gives the sign green or yellow tags to a scaffold inspector all scaffold inspectors and scaffold supervisors must be certified scaffold inspector inspects scaffold as soon as possible after scaffold supervisor's inspection scaffold inspector also fills in and signs a separate scaffold field inspection checklist inspector gives this checklist to work permit issuer's unit who will keep it until scaffold is taken down if scaffold inspector agrees that scaffold is safe to use he will fill in and sign green or yellow scaffold tags previously given to him by scaffold supervisor so these are the conditions and requirements for tags you have to remember red tag means totally not allow to go on the scaffold it is not safe yellow mean the person those are the erector or dismantle they can go but the condition is they must be fully equipped with full body harness and lanyard and also with the permission and under the direct supervision of competent scaffolding supervisor and green tag mean it is safe for use so this is a short introduction of scaffold tags dear friends and colleagues you are on the platform of safety first life today we are going through scaffold safety training a to z let us understand now the scaffold erection requirement only competent and experienced person must be permitted to erect and dismantle the scaffolding at site guard rails mid rails and tow boards must be placed on all open side of platforms more than 1.2 meter above ground or floor the top rail must be placed approximately 1200 mm high from the platform the mid rail must be placed approximately 600 mm high from the platform the tow board must be placed approximately 150 to 300 mm from the platform all scuff floors shall be provided with an access ladder that extends to at least 1 meter above the landing platform platforms should be 220 mm wide and 25 mm thick and it should be tightened with the scaffolding to prevent movements in high winds scaffolds should be clean after the completion of work 
scaffold should be on a firm foundation with the base plates scaffold should be properly braced and tied up scaffold should have a properly tightened platform scaffold should have guardrail over 1.2 meters and scaffold should have adequate means of egress and access dear friends and colleagues do you know the different types of ties those are used in different types of scaffolding structures if someone ask tell me any five types of ties those are used in the scaffold so what will be your answer the different types of ties may include through tie box tie ankle tie lip tie racket tie reveal tie or buttress ties ties would usually start at the 4 meter level then as a rule of thumb they would be every other lift and every other standard can you imagine for a moment what might be the interference in the scaffolding structure it may be ties removed platform boards removed guardrails removed brick guards removed toe boards removed or structural parts removed so once you are on site you are going to inspect the scaffolding structure you have to consider all these important elements of the scaffolding maybe someone by mistake or deliberately after the inspection of scaffolding competent person maybe someone removed such important element of a scaffold he make a deliberate or unintentional interference that may lead to a potential accident falling from height how you will go on the upper level of the scaffold definitely you need ladder so let us understand what is ladder safety always remember the rule of 4 into 1 have a look is 20 feet and the width of ladder is 5 feet and this is the rule of 4 into 1 do you know the different types of hazards with ladder the ladder might be unsecured overbalanced slips on rungs defective or false steps so ladder is required but it must be secured ladder should not be defective or there should be no wooden patch used for rungs as a substitution you have to consider all these points what else you will look for ladder safety ladder must be tied at top around stiles tie up in the middle when necessary firm and level footing good condition top rung level or just above stepping off point not painted and projecting at least 1.05 meter or with a suitable hand hold usually the top four or five rungs should be above the landing platform remember scaffold must be able to support its own weight and four times the maximum intended load remember scaffolds must be designed by a qualified person any scaffold damaged or weakened from any cause shall be immediately repaired and shall not be used until repairs have been completed let us discuss now pre erection checks for scaffolding here i'll discuss the points to check before allowing the erection of any type of scaffolding number 1 is the surface to be erected on firm and level and will it take the weight of the scaffolding and everything to be placed on it number 2 are there sufficient materials to complete the scaffold or the path to be erected number 3 are the materials in good condition number 4 is the access and egress suitable number 5 are the persons erecting the scaffolding competent and have they seen and understand a risk assessment and if required a math statement 
Number six, on soft ground sole pads, our sole boards must be used to spread the weight. Number seven, any sole pad must be minimum length of 450 mm, 18 inches. Number eight, on concrete or steel, base plates may now be omitted. Number nine, at all times, ladders must be used to gain access to all levels of scaffolding. Number ten, ladders should be placed at an angle of four into one seventy-five degree and should be tied at the top. Number eleven, ideally, ladder access towers should be separate from the main scaffolding. Dear friends and colleagues, these are the important points. You have to consider these points prior to give permission for erection. Let us start discussing now about planking. All planking or platforms shall be overlapped, minimum 12 inches, are secured from movement. Scaffold planks shall extend over their end supports, not less than six inches, nor more than 18 inches. These are the conditions for overlapping. For extension, eighteen inches, six inches, or twelve inches. Once you are going to construct a platform, you have to ensure no paint on wood platforms except edges that may be marked for identification. Fully plank, no mixed components unless compatible and integrity maintained. No modification of mixed components unless approved by. scaffold competent person do you know how to find faults on a boarded platform faults that should be checked for when inspecting a boarded platforms are oversale no less than 50 mm oversale no more than 150 mm no gaps in working platform correctly spaced trusses maximum 1.2 meter for visually graded boards boards fixed to prevent movement not damaged no undue cracks not contaminated and not bended or scuff plated you have to consider all these points because if something is missing this will be a fault and you have to try your best to highlight it and to rectify the fault prior it will convert into a potential accident dear friends and colleagues we are talking about scaffolding safety do you know the reasons why scaffolds collapse there are different reasons the cause of the scaffold collapse might be constructed with inadequate materials inadequate for intended purpose erected by incompetent people it might be placed on inadequate foundations the reason for collapse might be overloaded undermined altered by incompetent people hit by machinery or shock loaded subjected to excessive wind loads by being sheeted whether flexible or solid or the reason for collapse might be the scaffolding structure is not regularly inspected by the scaffold competent person after highlighting the reason for collapse let us discuss now the common scaffold safety tips remember never use scaffold that don't have proper guardrails installed have a look in the photograph there is no guardrail and the person is on the second floor and also he is without any personal fall arrest system means he is not wearing full body harness what will happen there is a chance of fall from height that might be deadly scaffold must be around adequate foundations unsuitable objects will not be used as working platforms have a look this platform is not suitable and that's why this scaffold is not safe for use lifeline support must be checked for compatibility 
prior to use this is an example of lifeline support have a look on the top how the person is using a lifeline this is the way how you can work safely at height remember a scarf folding structure must have safe access cross braces prohibited as means of access rest platforms required at 35 feet in towers and make sure slip resistant on all steps and landings have a look on the right hand side this is not the right way to climb up or down it is potentially dangerous i have told you what is pfas here again a quick overview personal fall arrest system workers must be trained how to properly use personal fall arrest system personal fall arrest system include anchorage lifeline and full body harness with double lanyard both active and passive fall protection after discussing the safety tips let us discuss now the restrictions don't overload the scaffold don't erect or move near power line you have to repair damaged components restrict horizontal movement of workers unless provided with fall protection prohibit work activities during high winds unless authorized remove whole scaffold from service until repaired you have to remember scaffolds must be erected 10 feet away of the overhead power lines with 300 volts to 50 kv on the right hand side have a look this is the example of overhead power lines and you must maintain at least 10 feet distance from the power lines at all times throughout the work you have to ensure proper clearance near overhead lines keep yourself 10 feet away from the overhead power lines unless de-energized relocated or the alternative arrangement of installing protective covering to avoid electrocution remember no work on snow or ice covered platforms no barrels boxes or ladders on top of scaffolds have a look this is the example this is the platform and underneath platform is supported with ladders that is totally unacceptable and potentially dangerous no worker is allowed on such platforms as a safety practitioner as a supervisory staff you will ensure these points if you will not identify or rectify these faults the ultimate purpose of safety first life will never be fulfilled because injuries will happen there will be fatal accident and there will be deprivations among the families and in all cases it is not acceptable it will be a failure and it will also give me a negative message and personally i will feel regret if will not be able to save the workers from harm or injuries dear friends and colleagues we have talked a lot about the safety of the workforce safety of the staff let us discuss few points about how to protect public from over work activities especially once we are going to erect a scaffolding structure please ensure cap tubes below head height protect all sharp edges highlight hazardous tubes ample headroom protection fan or gantry and place sign boards and erect barriers to protect public from construction activities we have talked a lot about pre erection of scaffolding erection procedure let us discuss few points 
those are related to scaffold dismantling procedure these points are common for all types of scaffolding prior to start dismantling you have to check have any ties been removed have any ledger been removed have any transoms been removed have any braces been removed have any other structural parts been removed is there any damage to the scaffolding are there any changes to the ground conditions has the area been cordon off with the barriers and signs to warn others after the assurance of these important safety points you can start dismantling scaffold what we are doing now we are under a training session training is required as you have learned today in different health and safety regulations training is mandatory employees must receive training from qualified person that covers nature of hazards electrical falls and falling items use of scaffold and handling of scaffold component maximum intended load and load carrying capabilities of scaffold procedures for setup dismantling or moving the system if there is a training program either it is internal or external a trainer must cover all these points in the scaffolding training program remember only certificates will not work at site your competency experience skills and safety oriented mindset it will change the site condition it can protect workers from harm it can also save the company from catastrophic accident dear friends and colleagues you are watching safety first life this training session is about scaffolding safety a to z categories of scaffold components of scaffold parts of scaffold duties of scaffold responsibilities of competent person scaffolding inspection scaffolding tagging procedure pre erection checks scaffolding erection safety scaffolding dismantling safety scaffolding access safety and the legal requirements those are related to scaffolding safety and work at height we have discussed all together in the end again some general rules those are related to scaffolding safety training follow the manufacturer's instructions when erecting the scaffold don't work on scaffolds outside during stormy or windy weather don't climb on scaffolds that wobble or lean to one side initially inspect the scaffold prior to mounting it don't use a scaffold if any pulley block hook or fitting is visibly worn cracked rusted or otherwise damaged don't use any scaffold tagged out of service don't work on platforms or scaffolds unless they are fully plank don't use a scaffold unless guard rails and all flooring are in place don't walk or work beneath a scaffold unless a wire mesh has been installed between the top rail and the toe board are plunky use full body safety harness and lanyards when working on scaffolding at a height attach the lanyard to a secure member of the scaffold don't climb the cross braces for access to the scaffold use only the ladders don't jump from to or between scaffolding don't move a movable scaffold if anyone is on the top choke the wheels of rolling scaffold using the wheel blocks and also lock the wheels by using your foot to depress the wheel lock before using the scaffold dear friends and colleagues scaffold safety starts from the ground up only safe work conditions and actions will prevent unnecessary injuries when working on these ever changing structures and you have to make sure and remember 
for protection is required when work height reach 10 feet or more provide proper access to scaffold and never allow employees to climb on class places for horizontal or vertical movement the scaffold competent person must be present when building moving or dismantling the scaffold and must inspect it daily erect barricades to prevent individuals from walking on the work platforms and place signs to warn those close by the possible hazards and always maintain a minimum of 10 feet distance between the scaffolding structure and the overhead power lines ensure all employees working on scaffold have had proper training and they are equipped with journal and task specific ppe and lastly implement and follow permit to work system while working at height without any confusion and headache this is for your safety and a barrier to protect your eyes hands legs bones and even your life and that's all for now training session related to scaffolding safety a to z is all if you have any question please ask in the comment section down below thanks for watching and don't forget to like comment and share the video with your friends and colleagues hope to see you soon with a new hsc tutorial till then take care good luck and allah hafiz